The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The 23rd Psalm is probably the most popular of the Psalms in the Old Testament. It is typically associated with funeral liturgies and is often quoted during wedding ceremonies. The Eastern Orthodox Church typically includes this psalm in their Eucharist service. Traditionally, in the Jewish faith, the 23rd Psalm is sung during the third Sabbath meal. Why such popularity? The imagery of the 23rd Psalm is touching and heartwarming. God being portrayed as a loving and caring shepherd leading and feeding his flock. Could this Psalm be more than the poetic writings of King David? With hindsight, we see Jesus in the imagery of this psalm. When King David penned these words, Jesus had not yet come. Is it possible that our beloved 23rd Psalm is a messianic prophecy predicting the life and ministry of Jesus Christ? Let's see. In episode 3, we will open the book of Revelation and see that Psalm 23 has its root in the ethereal world of heaven and God's great throne room. Psalm 23 is the shepherd's song. Should we accept that Psalm 23 is a prophetic description of the Messiah, then we must accept the fact that the heart of God is the heart of a shepherd, and the fingerprints of a shepherd can be found in the book of Revelation. Psalm 23 begins with the declaration that the Lord is our shepherd, who leads us beside still waters. This imagery is also seen in Revelation. In the throne room scene of chapter 7, we see the Lamb being our shepherd, leading us to springs of living water. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This may be interesting, but we don't see the green pastures. Indirectly, we do. The King James Version says that the Lamb will feed us like sheep. For the Lamb, which is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them, and shall lead them 
unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. The Greek word used in this verse for feeding is poimeneo, which references the duty of a shepherd to feed his flock. So, therefore, the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne will lead his flock to green pastures and still waters. Again, let's return to the still waters of Psalm 23. Where do we find still waters in the book of Revelation? And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. We witness a throne room experience in the fourth chapter of Revelation. Around the throne, we see a sea of glass clear as crystal. I'm convinced that this sea is comprised of living water. This is confirmed by Revelation chapter 7, where we see springs of living water. Imagine the still waters of Psalm 23 being a sea of living water, a sea of the Holy Spirit. The sea of glass reappears in Revelation chapter 15. But the sea has changed. The sea now is mingled with fire. What caused the sea to change? There can be only one logical answer. We see the saints of God who have gotten the victory over the beast standing on or near the sea of glass. What do these saints have that would cause the sea to erupt in flames? The answer is simple. These have been baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. Another thought comes to mind. What feeds the sea? And we read in the book of Revelation, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. It's a pure river of the water of life, proceeding out of the throne of God and the Lamb. The throne feeds the sea. In Psalm 23, verse 3, we see that the Messiah will lead his flock down the path of righteousness for his namesake. This is a powerful truth. Where do we see the righteousness of the saints in the book of Revelation? We see the righteousness of God displayed during the second coming of Jesus. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. We see the bride of Christ being arrayed in fine linen, which is the righteousness of the saints. Righteousness is much more than good deeds and a kind heart. Righteousness has a judgment aspect. The book of Revelation prophesies of a time when all nations will come and worship the Lord, because God's judgments are made manifest. The 21st chapter of Revelation reveals when this will occur. It is when God creates a new heaven and a new earth centered on New Jerusalem, wherein dwells righteousness. The book of Psalms teaches that the Lord guides the meek in judgment 
and he will teach the meek his ways. Judgment is not something to be feared by those who abide in meekness before the Lord. Judgment is the guidance and teaching of the Holy Spirit. It is the path of the Lord filled with mercy and truth. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The book of Revelation could also be referred to as the book of death. By the billions, we see the earth's population dying by war, famine, disease, and natural disasters. But there is an undercurrent of faith and hope. We see the saints of God overcome the beast by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, because they loved not their lives unto the death. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. These saints are walking through the valley of the shadow of death, but they fear no evil, for the shepherd is guiding them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The book of Revelation also describes the great judgment of God, where death and hell will be judged, and whosoever was not found written in the Lamb's book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. This is the true and eternal valley of death. But the saints of God have no fear of this event, because their names are written in the book of life. Please note that the great shepherd will lead his flock with the rod and staff, tools of compassion and mercy. The book of Revelation teaches that the rod used by the Lord is a scepter of righteousness, a rod of iron. The kingdom of God will be ruled by our great shepherd king with strength and authority. In Psalm 23, verse 5, David envisioned that the coming Messiah would prepare a table for us in the presence of our enemies. We don't see this happening in the Gospels. So when will the Messiah perform this service? We turn to the book of Revelation. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb is come and his wife has made herself ready, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he said unto me, Write, 
Blessed are those which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. The Marriage Supper of the Lamb What other event could Psalm 23 be describing? King David understood that the Messiah would anoint the heads of his flock. Do we have evidence of this happening in the book of Revelation? We see this anointing happen with the sealing of the 144,000. David concludes the 23rd Psalm with an utterance of true praise. He would dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is a powerful declaration. But what could it mean? How does the future Messiah address this prophecy? In the book of Hebrews, we see that the Old Testament is a type and shadow, prophesying of the coming Messiah, the Church Age, and the New Jerusalem. Moses was admonished by God to make his tabernacle according to the pattern shown to him on Mount Sinai. The pattern given to Moses was not a blueprint based upon structures seen in Egypt but it was patterned on things seen in the heavens. Should this be the case with the tabernacle of Moses, then should not the tabernacle of David also have a divine and heavenly origin? In the Old Testament, we see two tabernacles, the tabernacle of Moses and the tabernacle of David. Should these two tabernacles be patterned after things seen in the heaven, then what could they represent? What New Testament fulfillment do we see? In the New Testament, we have two spiritual tabernacles fulfilling the prophecy given to us by the Old Testament tabernacles. The Ark of the Covenant is the connecting factor, the Ark where God and man meet. The tabernacle of Moses finds its fulfillment in the person and ministry of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Messiah, who died on the cross and entered the temple of heaven with his blood. With the blood applied to the heavenly Ark of the Covenant, forgiveness and redemption was offered to all humanity. Jesus performed the duties of a high priest when he entered the temple in heaven and offered his blood as an atoning sacrifice. Jesus is the fulfillment of the tabernacle of Moses. Since we can find the tabernacle of Moses in the Gospels, can we find a counterpart to the tabernacle of David in the New Testament? The answer is yes. But to put my answer into perspective, we must understand that the tabernacle of David was constructed differently than the tabernacle of Moses. In the tabernacle of Moses, the ark dwelt in the most holy part of the tabernacle and was accessed by the high priest once a year on the day of Passover. This was not the case with the tabernacle of David. The ark was situated in a large tent viewable by every worshiper who entered the tent. King David 
organized the existing priesthood into a 24-7 worship ministry to God. The protocol of the ark clearly changed during the reign of King David. The presence of God was open to all who worshipped in the tabernacle. Why is this significant? With the blood atonement of Jesus, our relationship with God changed. All who accept the sacrifice of Jesus has access to the Holy Spirit. We read in the first epistle to the Corinthians that we now are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in us. The New Testament, Tabernacle of David, is fulfilled in the body of Christ. This may be interesting, but how do these tabernacles tie into the book of Revelation? We have two tabernacles in the Old Testament, we have two temples in the New Testament, and we have to throne room experiences in the book of Revelation. The first throne room vision is described in Revelation chapter 4. We see a throne, and the one who sat on the throne had the appearance of Jasper and Carnelian, with an emerald rainbow encircling the throne. The second throne room vision is found in chapter 7. John looked and saw a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people and language standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. Notice that this throne room experience has changed from the description given in chapter 4. Now we see a great multitude stand before the throne of God, and we also see the Lamb of God in front of the throne. What caused the change? There can be only one answer to this question. Calvary. Is it possible Moses experienced the throne room of Revelation chapter 4, while David envisioned the throne room of Revelation chapter 7. When we read in Psalm 23 that David would dwell in the house of the Lord forever, did he have the house of the Lord in heaven in mind? I think he did. Do you envision yourself in that great multitude? praising Jesus before the throne? Should your answer be yes, then you, along with David, will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Bible teaches that the events of the Old Testament are types and shadows of events and symbols found in the New Testament. With this thought in mind, we should find New Testament counterparts to the tabernacles of the Old Testament. Let's see. The 23rd Psalm presented in graph form.
no doubt, we see the 23rd Psalm being fulfilled in the life and ministry of Jesus Christ, but we also see its fingerprint in the book of Revelation. We may think the 23rd Psalm is beautiful poetry, but it's prophetic. Its truth spans the ages and looks into the very throne rooms of God. Now, the God of peace that brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen.